It's so good to meet you. It's nice to meet you, yeah. So here you are for the world premiere of this film. How exciting is this for you? It's so exciting for me. This is my first time at TIFF, and it's the world premiere of this film I've been working on for three years. Um, I've been working on it since I was 12, and now I'm 15, so it's very exciting to me. Um, I, I'm so excited to be here with my abominable family. They're so amazing, so yeah. So, I mean, there are a lot, uh, there's a lot of female energy in yes. this movie. Yeah. Talk about just working with these, you know, women filmmakers and just the story. Well, I feel like it's such an empowering story because it's about, <clears throat> it's about a female lead, a strong female lead who's a tomboy and she's not afraid to be who she is. And I think that's uh, so amazing. And also so great working with our um, lovely director, Jill. Um, she's been just such a great supportive and collaborative director. Yeah. And have you had a chance to see the whole film yet? I have, but um, tonight's my first time seeing the film and it's complete, complete, like final stage. Last time I saw it, it was maybe 80, 90% there, but now we'll have the music and all the scenery complete and it'll be so gorgeous. Congratulations. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. What a spectacular movie. Thank you. How excited are you to be here at TIFF to share it with the world? I'm so excited. Just to have TIFF as like a platform to be the first introduction to this film is so meaningful because, like, you, you know, the TIFF doesn't pick bad movies. And so it's, it's, like a, it's like a really nice compliment to kind of have our start here. Um, this movie is it's just a very special, very near and dear to my heart. And, you know, um, as a Chinese woman, as a woman, um, there's so much representation um, in this film, so I'm very excited. Talk about the fact that it's really the first major animated film yeah. led by women and yeah. your character. Produced being... by women, written, directed by a woman, you know, starring a woman and of and a, and a Chinese or Asian heritage. We haven't had that since Mulan. Um, who I happen to work with for the past seven years, so I've got some tips, you know, which is nice. Um, but it's, uh, what I love about it is it, it's all of those things, but it's not at all. It's really just a heartwarming story that's completely relatable. So even though it's breaking boundaries in every way, it's still totally just a great movie. So there's, I, th I feel like the moving forward in this direction for the industry is really important because the film is not called a little Chinese girl goes on a journey in China. It's called Abominable. It's really a. It's a much of. It's more of a universal story. And the point is, is that you can have things directed and written starring women, and it can be a completely universal story. And that's why, you know, the film I think is very special. Thank you. So Thank much. you. Thank you. Thanks so much, Julia. Thank you. So much of who I was. She's so stubborn. She's such a tomboy. She's Chinese. This movie means a lot for Pearl Studio uh, after Kung Fu Panda 3. This is literally the biggest co-production movie between Hollywood and the Chinese film studio. And you know, China is soon becoming the biggest movie market in the world. So this particular movie and this particular time means a new uh, milestone, I would say, in, in the whole movie industry in China. So we are super excited to be part of this you know, big movie and with the amazing partner DreamWorks and Universal, of course. Yeah. And it has such a strong, you know, women-led production team. Yeah, she's here somewhere. And the character as well. Talk about just the role of women in making this film happen and what that means. Sure, I think one of one of the core, you know, uh, feature or core um, value we want to deliver in our movie is always that deep emotional connection with the audience and with this amazing uh, teamwork. Female uh, talents, female female leadership in our creative team. Like, we believe our movie is really delivered that very unique sense of emotional connection and you know experience that could build resonance with our consumers. So I, I, I think this is an amazing team here. Yeah. Congratulations! It's a beautiful movie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Enjoy your time. Yeah, thank you. I'm sure it's going to be exciting yeah. seeing it with an audience. Of course, yes. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Wow, I mean, really a gorgeous, gorgeous film. Thank you so it. much. Loved it. Thank you. So this...
premiering this beautiful film here at the Toronto International Film Festival. Talk about being able to share it with the audience here. I am just over the moon to be able to have our world premiere debut here at the opening weekend of TIFF. It is a privilege every filmmaker wants and I'm just so grateful that they accepted our film and that they're celebrating it. We, we've, we've really felt the love. Now I know this was a personal journey for you. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, I've been in this industry for about 29 years and um, worked at Pixar for a decade. My first movie that I worked on was Toy Story as an animator. And um, so I've been in this industry for a long time, but it's a very rare privilege to get a chance to write and direct your own movie. And so I pulled a lot from personal experiences in my life. Um, I created Yi to be the character that um, I wish I had had as a role model. She's a strong, kind of independent teenage girl who just drives this movie and a tomboy, not afraid to get dirty, not afraid to sleep in the woods. And um, and as a kind of role reversal, the, the um, teenage boy in this film, Jin, he is the one who cares about his hair and his kicks getting dirty, you know, and so we play played on that a lot. The movie's a lot of fun. Everest is a breakout character. He is funny, he is charming. You peel layers back throughout the movie and you get to know more and more about him and what his true power is. Not just his magical powers, but just the power to help this girl heal in her life. Um, talk about what, what meaning is it that this is really like the first female with, you know, major animated film. It feels like times are changing, right? I mean, that's what's so great about this is at, when I went to school 29 years ago at California Institute of the Arts, there were 90 people in my class and four women. And now CalArts has 60% women. And so it took a while, but I think the future of filmmaking is changing and shifting, and I am very, proud to be a part of the shift. So, talk about the role of music. It's such an integral part of the story, right? The music in this was part of the original script. I wrote it in there partially because I feel like the violin is an instrument that is a voice without having to say specifically what it is that you're talking about. So for an emotional a moment, it's when she's playing her violin, the audience gets to read their own interpretation into that. And so, and I wanted to integrate that with Everest somehow, so he has this humming aspect that's almost the harmony to her violin playing. Um, our composer, Rupert Grickson Williams, is, was phenomenal as a partner in this. He came on very early on, and the score in this movie is so powerful. He put everything into this, we all did, and I think you could really feel the love and the camaraderie in the film. It was labor love, it really was. You feel it. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. You did. How do you feel to be at a world premiere for your movie here at the Toronto International Film Festival? <laughs>
Were you scared to be lost? Yeah. And is Yi your buddy now? Because she, she got you back home. Yeah. So why should people come see this movie? For you. Well, congratulations, Everest. You've made it to the red carpet. Enjoy. Enjoy the movie. Oh. Hi, how are you? Hi, Michelle. Good to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. So, world premiere. Yes, yes. Talk about being able to debut this film. Oh, well, to be able to debut it here in Toronto has been super exciting. I, I have family here, and I, I've only ever been here just to see them, and to be here for this festival has been very exciting. Now, this is really the first major all-female production. Yes. And the female character, and female character driven too. Yes. Um, just talk about uh, the film and, and just the uh, yes. Sure. Um, even the process itself for being an actress and being in a room that is just full of really powerful, smart women was it, it was so different, like, I, and you don't realize that until you do it, how refreshing it is to, to have that experience in the work environment. Um, and then to see the film and have the lead character be so strong and confident has been really exciting to see because I can't remember being a kid and having that kind of a character, especially in animation, to have that kind of a character portrayed on the screen. So this has been, I, I'm so excited for everybody to see it. Now you play Yi's mom. Yes. Talk about just the relationships between the women in this family and and Yi's journey. Well, it, it's very similar, honestly, with the way that my I have my relationship with my mother. Um, you know, there is, especially in an Asian household, sometimes you aren't so forthcoming with your feelings and you hide it a little bit. And, and then in the end, you realize that you're so much stronger when you're honest with how you feel, when you ask for that help and when you, you know, rely on your family um, and the bonds. And I think that, that that is exactly what this film shows, is that journey of ye thinking, oh, I need to just do it myself and I'm going to hide it from my mom. and, and and then in the end, thinking, no, my family is, they are my support system, they are my strength. And talk about Yi's journey uh, to bring Everest home and how that really helps her own feel away with more knowledge. I think, honestly, like anybody, you kind of have to go, you have to go the wrong direction first before you really find your way back. Um, and I think that's exactly what she does, is that she, she goes on this adventure thinking it's going to be one thing, and halfway through she realizes, you know, with Tenzing's character and, and with Albert's character, how, what really she's gaining from them um, versus just trying to get to Everest. It's not just the goal of where you end up, but it's the journey of how you get there and the hardship along the way, and I think she learns that. Now the role of music in the film is really it's so huge. central. Yeah. I, I was so shocked and, and excited that so much classical music was being used in this film. Um, I also grew up playing classical music and being trained in that way, and, and you never get to see it front and center in, in a film, especially a children's animation, you know, a kid's animated film. Um, and so it, it's just beautiful. It really sets the scene and is in these sweeping, gorgeous landscapes. Uh, I think it's, it's everybody is going to really enjoy it. So yeah, no, thank you for your time. Beautiful film. Thank you. Thank you. World premiere here right. at DIFF. <laughs> yeah. Just talk about being able to debut this film here. It's so amazing to be here at TIFF where the world will finally get to see this film that we've worked on for so many years. It's really a special film to myself personally in terms of a connection with the story. First modern day Chinese family ever to be featured in a global animated film. It's really, really amazing. I got goosebumps just saying that out loud. <laughs> so I just can't wait for the whole world to see it. And it is so gorgeous. Oh, thank you. Um, just give us a, a brief uh, description of your personal journey bringing this film to life. Um, you know, I'm the Chief Creative Officer of Pearl Studio, as well as a producer on the film, and I've seen the film through a number of years of creative development. Um, the character evolved a lot over that time. We had different creative um, teams and, and insights, and really where we ended up, I think, is something that we are all so proud of. That's a beautiful, magical journey, um, representation, um, just 
I couldn't ask for more in terms of what this movie is. Now, the film is also basically the first major animated film with an all-female Yes, production. absolutely. That makes it really special as well. Jill Colton is the first female writer-director of a global animated film. Um, and we have Suzanne Berge, who is a female producer, as well as, of course, myself. The leadership at DreamWorks, Bargy Cone. There are women everywhere. And, of course, our leading character, Yi, is a strong, ambitious uh, woman that we hope will be inspiring to girls all over the world. Thank you so much. Thank you. Very nice to meet you. How are you? Hello. How are you? I'm hanging in here. <laughs> Great. I like you. So, world premiere for this film. Just talk about being able to premiere it here and being a part of it. Oh, I love the Toronto Film Festival. My very first festival experience was here, actually, with a movie called Martha Marcy May Marlene, and then 12 Years a Slave I came here with, and so it feels like a great a great um, home away from home as far as festivals go. It's always an incredibly warm reception, and I feel like a lot of real um, avid moviegoers who love you know, seeing something for the first time. Now, you were a lot of fun in this movie. Oh, yeah. Uh, have you had a chance to see the I have game? not, no. No, no, no. Well, I can tell you it's pretty spectacular. Oh, good, 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 good. I'm so glad. So, um, talk about working with female production team, female director, and this really strong female character, female characters all around. Well, God, I mean, uh, I, I wish it weren't as rare uh, as it is, and... Um, I don't know. To, to me, it's hard for me to talk about in a in a supremely unique way because I feel where I have been working for a long time has been so uh, women centric and uh, stories of, of women, women over forty, sort of at the front and center and heart of all of these stories. So I have felt so uniquely supported in that way uh, in the environment I've been working in. So this didn't feel entirely new to me, but. Uh, what was sort of interesting was like not only was the, were the characters and the narrative uh, female centric, but everybody behind the scenes were as well. And I thought I think that was a really um, extraordinary thing and very empowering. And as I've always been very happy to be a woman, it was a nice a nice thing to look around the room and see women everywhere. Thank you yeah. so much. Thank you. I appreciate it. Nice meet to you. meet you. What's so funny is they just told me your history yes. with the mountain and. I met Sir Edmund Hillary many really? years ago. Yes. Very so, cool. oh my God, this is so cool. Yes, it is. It's very cool to be a part of. So here you are at the world premiere for this film, this yeah. beautiful film. Talk about being able to premiere it here. Um, it's an honor, you know, to be a part of TIFF. I've never been here before. It's it's a, it's a pretty pretty big thing. I'm I'm very proud of the movie and what we've done. I'm proud of everyone that was a part of it. So I'm really excited. I'm really excited to be here and show everyone. You know, this movie, it's, um, it's unique too because yeah. it has um, really uh, almost all female production staff yes. and also really strong female leaders. Mm -hmm. Talk about working with this group of people. Um, well, our, our director Jill Colton, she wrote and directed. She's She's great, and so is Chloe, and they do amazing jobs um, in the movie. Uh, it's really cool to be a part of something with a female lead character and one that's Chinese too. So Now, I'm off camera, so if you could just tell us a little bit about your history with the mountain. Um, well, my grandfather was the first person to climb Mount Everest in 1953 with Sir Edmund Hillary. Um, yeah, I guess that's just just the blunt way to put it. So, when you had the opportunity to be part of this movie, just how personal of a journey was it for you? Very personal. I've never been. I've never. I've never been to the mountain before. Uh, my mom and her whole family has though. So, being able to do this and and show them has been just. I have no words for it. It's just. It's so cool to be a part of it, uh, especially with with the connection that it has to my family. The film, music plays such a huge part in the film. Talk about um, how it really is a part of the story. Oh, well the violin is what Yi plays, and the music is how she expresses herself, because uh, Yi is such a stubborn, and she keeps, she keeps all of her emotions into herself, so playing the violin is how she escapes having to talk and, you know, really feel things, so. 
And Jin really changes too. Jin does change, yes. Um, I'm not going to spoil how or why, uh, <laughs> but he is kind of this um, selfish, uh, self-centered kid at the start, but by the end he realizes that family does mean a lot. Um, and yeah, it's really cool to play a character that, that has that kind of turn. And what's interesting to me is that this character of Everest, the Yeti, really um, transforms everybody around him, mm -hmm. but it's really from within them too. Yes, yes. Um, I think the change mostly does come within ourselves and the journey that we go on, but Everest is definitely there to help us push and, and turn over the page, you know? Uh, we always refer to Everest as like, like a dog, like a house pet, because he really is. He can just cheer you up no matter what mood you're in, so. Thank you so much. Of course, thank you. It was nice meeting you. So, world premiere here at Toronto International Film Festival. Talk about bringing film. Well, this is pretty exciting. I, I'm still, I think, it's sinking in, you know, that we're all done. It's been a long road. I've been on it four years, um, and I just can't believe we're done. I'm really excited. I'm nervous. I hope everybody loves it, but we, because we love it so much. We've worked really hard on it. Um, now, this film really broke mm. the gender barrier. Yeah, I yeah. Think. Talk about yeah. just yeah. your, you know, working with no. Jill and the oh, whole yeah. production team. And well, the funny thing is, I've worked with Jill for over 20 years, so it's um, kind of old hat for me working with her. We kind of we go back to my very first job on Cast Don't Dance back in like the early 90s, I want to say, or mid 90s. So. And I've worked with um, Suzanne uh, for, I've known her for a long time. So it's actually, it was kind of great and it felt really natural. And this story is such a, a fantastic story and such a great lead character in Yi. Um, I don't know, it just, it, it felt right and it felt really natural for the project. And you know, it, I was thrilled to be able to do it with Jill and Suzanne. Talk about the, you know, the female characters mm -hmm. and how they really weave the tapestry of this story. Yeah, well, it's great. The relationship, so much of the story is about Yi, um, you know, obviously taking Everest home, but it's really about her returning home and having these great characters of mom and Nai Nai. Um, it's just great to see this family dynamic of these women, you know, together and holding down the fort and doing their best to raise this girl um, who's obviously dealing with a tough loss. And I gotta say, it was a dream to work with Sai Chen. I mean, oh my god, she was amazing as Nai Nai, and that was, that was really fun. She is a great personality, and that was, that's something I won't forget. Yeah, yeah I really enjoyed her, too. Yeah, no, she's fantastic. <laughs> now the music is incredible. Yeah. Talk about the role of the music in supporting the story. Yeah, well, the uh, music is huge in the story because of the violin, and um, we had to get Rupert involved really early because Rupert Gregson Williams, our composer, because the violin playing is not just score; it's her, it's source music. She's playing the violin, so we had to animate it, and it is note for note correct with what the animators did. Um, they went and they studied violin. We had uh, people coming in consulting. And so every finger, every note is accurate to the music. And so we had to get involved really early. And then he took the violin playing and, and was able to incorporate it into some of the different themes throughout the score of the movie, which was great. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Have a great time. Yeah, thank you. Okay.